Welcome to DAX Machina. Join us as we explore the mysteries of this world. Cryptids, monsters, macabre tales, and horror stories abound. Could they be true? Are monsters real? Folks, and thank you for joining us on another edition of DAX Machina. We have a full house tonight. Joining me is my brother from South Carolina, Robbie Rip Reigns. From right here in Springfield, Missouri, my, my somewhat better looking brother with the better hat, Steve Wildman Monrotis, and the uh, the cutest of the four, <laughs> the pint sized Carrie Pocket Doc Davis. Boys, how you guys doing tonight? Wyatt, I am rolling. Doc's so far out in the country, he's got to come to us by lantern light. <laughs> exactly. I love that lantern, that. though. Thanks, man. Is that actual oil lantern or is that electric? No, it's electric. I got my, my oil lanterns in my, my den down here. We got six or eight of those old hurricane lanterns in case power goes out, but I like well, those old style lanterns. I need to pick up a couple of those. I do too. How's everybody? How's everybody doing tonight? We had a full house already. I mean, look, just a whole lot of activity going on in the chat. In fact, the comments are going by so fast I can't keep up with them all. But then again, I I that's trying. pretty typical of me. <laughs> I was just trying, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm falling behind already. Yeah, same here. Well, folks, if you're gonna if you're going to uh, post a question, make sure you do it in all caps so I can catch it. Um, Yeah, uh, Poncho says, I'll, I'll uh, have a scotch if you all call a toast. Balvini. Well, we do toasts at the end of every show, so that guaranteed at least one point. Some point tonight, there'll definitely be a toast. Um, uh, Roxanne yeah, says, new get... hat, DA. Actually, this is a hat I've had for a couple of years. Uh, I've been um, reluctant to wear it because it's hot. It's le it's leather. Uh, but uh, uh, William William Nighthawk made this band for me. And I finally got it properly put on this hat. And now I'm wearing it again. And uh, I love this band. And William William Hand made it for me. It's all beadwork. Absolutely beautiful. It's got a, a medicine wheel that goes with it as well. But while I was trying to get it put on the hat, it came off. So I'm going to have to find a new way to attach this. Uh, but hey, I'm, I really love this hat band. You know, handmade for me by a by a Lakota shaman. So uh, he true. said it should should keep me covered wherever I go. I'll take what I can get. You know, mm -hmm. I just had a realization with the four of us on these shows as frequently as we are. It occurred to me that anytime you put four whiskey drinkers together in the same place, they're all going to find a fifth somehow. At ah. least. <laughs> it will be here all week, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Even the dog left me. As soon as we went live, he jumped uh, off my lap, a little traitorous bastard. <laughs> we already had a question. Bernie Gannon says, are lizard men and reptilians different? What is the distinction? Um, well, we'll, we'll, get, we'll kind of dig into that here here shortly. We're going to start out talking about uh, about uh, different sightings, and then we're going to get into the, the, the differences. Uh, but primarily the, di the difference that we're going to concern ourselves with that was more, is the reptilians most people associate with aliens, and lizard men are more earthbound, uh, yeah. possibly from you know earth origin. Uh, but that's where the delineation starts, and we'll, we'll get into that more. Um. One to say before we get going that uh, our our uh, analytics are still showing that about forty percent of the people that watch the videos uh, are not subscribed to the channel. Now that may be something that YouTube has caused, or we don't know. But if y'all are watching these videos and you aren't subscribed to the channel, we would sure appreciate it. Uh, appreciate the support, and it does help the channel grow. Uh, we are growing pretty quickly. Uh, we're we're almost to, to seventy eight hundred, heading for ten thousand, hopefully soon. Uh, but yeah, we'll make sure you all hit that like, share, and subscribe, and hit that hit, hit that little bell icon so you get notified anytime we go live. Uh, <laughs> the inebri oh, Steve's got a Yingling flight. There we go. Nice. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was responding to Dash. They're like, I got my Yingling here. I'm like, me too. I got some in the fridge. But I haven't I'm, opened it yet. I'm drinking some drinking some iced tea at the moment. Hey, um, that flight's good. No shame. It just disappears too quick. It does. Yeah. I, I think I'm beginning to think that somebody's stealing it because, you know, I buy a case of it and like the next morning half it's gone and I don't remember having any of it. 
He came in with a case of it when we was over there, and I know I only drank like maybe two. Yeah, they just, just, quick the too. beer, the beer evaporated. I don't know what happened. I can't explain it. Yeah. I in the house. <laughs> we grilled that day, did you? Yeah. yeah, we did. Uh, well, you know, boys, we're gonna start we're gonna kick off the night talking about reptiles. I think one of the most famous, uh, famous lizard man cases is right there in Robbie's neck of the woods. I think we should start out talking a little bit about the Lizard Man of Sleep or um, and That one's interesting because not only did it attack at least two vehicles, but the people who reported the sightings mysteriously, mysteriously died not long later. Well, one of them was a little while afterwards, but there was a lot of mystery around, around his demise. Let's say you did a whole show on the skate or swamp on, yeah, on, on your good. channel. Why don't you uh, go introduce us to the topic and give us a little background on it, on it. I, um, Bishop, uh, Bishop County in uh, South Carolina. has got skate or swamp, pretty big swampy area down there. And even as recent as 2023, there's still been sightings of this thing around this area there's a uh, there's a guy who actually lives either right on the airport property or right off of the little small you know just like a little small county type airport and he's kind of like the resident expert on this he's he's like gone through all i can't remember the guy's name but he's gone through all the the sightings from all the way back he's he you know he's actually debunked some of them um some of them he can't explain can't explain there's some that uh he's got some castings of footprints and there again this is one of those where we come run into what most all the castings have three toes um look a lot like the castings in the bean field from uh falk arkansas oh, okay. a lot like that mm -hmm. um hmm. but the 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 two main stories uh, there's there's a lot but the two main stories that one da was talking about a uh, young boy, and this this was actually the first account, but the other account came out first, and then once he heard it, he went and told his story. So he was coming home from work. Uh, he was working at like Burger King, Wendy, some some fa fast food restaurant, and uh, I think he had a flat tire or the car stopped, but some some kind of vehicle uh, troubles, and he stopped to get out and check what was going on. And as he's working on trying to figure out how to fix his car, um, he sees this thing off in the uh, off the side of the road, like coming up the ditch. You know, that, how the drainage ditches run along parallel to the, uh, especially on, in swampy areas like that to keep the roads from flooding. Uh, he sees this thing in the ditch coming towards him. Well, he jumps in his car, getting ready to take off. Well, the thing jumps on his car. I mean, pretty much just like starts beating the living daylights out of his car trying to get him out of the car he takes off and it chases him for a little while he finally gets away well he just he's like i'm not telling anybody that they'll think i'm stupid they'll think i'm crazy they'll you know i'll get signed up for the whiz quiz whatever you know he just he said i i'm not i'm not telling anybody about that you know he's like i think he said I'll, I'll tell my dad that i hit a deer or something on the way home which is obviously not a uncommon occurrence down there uh, well, sometime later, and I can't remember the exact time frame of it, an elderly lady who lives not far from where his attack happened, she goes out one morning and finds her car, just the front bumper just chewed off, just scratch marks all over the car, uh, just like all over the hood, all over the quarter panels. Like I said, bumper was chewed up and pretty much ripped off. So she actually calls the sheriff's office and makes a report on it. And when he sees the report that she made to the sheriff's office or hears about it, rather, he was like, wow, that's exactly like what happened to me. So he finally goes back. He talks to his dad and they finally go to the sheriff's office and make the report. And that's the two most famous. Well, that's the ones you hear about. Like I said, there's tons more that get reported down there. But those are the two main ones that, uh, that people talk about when they talk about the skateboard swamp lizard man is those two right there 
And what's even funnier, or not funny, but what's tragic about that, uh, the guy that wrote the book on this talked about it. That boy and that older woman have both died, but wasn't like they just passed away of natural causes. The woman, uh, they said that it was natural causes, but it was a mysterious heart attack. So I think it's how they, and supposedly the, the, the boy was a home invasion gone wrong. That, mm. but there was just, he was, he was not in drugs. He was not in a troublemaker. He didn't have any kind of, didn't owe any kind of, because nothing was stolen. He, he was just, he was just killed in a home invasion gone wrong. Supposedly, but there's just a lot home of stuff. invasion with nothing stolen, right? Hmm. A uh, bullshit home invasion. Mm. Sounds oh, like uh, they, that's the worst home invasion. Uh, gotten, I don't see. Sounds like he might have gotten unalive because he knew a family that used to live in the White House. Well, and uh, but like I said, they up until as recent as 2023, they're still making sightings of that. Now, when Lance and I talked about this for the show, you know, we talked about how uh, that it's feasible that these things could be could survive kind of like the way alligators and crocodiles do. Because Johnny told the story when we was there, and I know you've heard the story, D.A. Doc, I, I'm pretty sure you've listened to that that one we did when Lance talked about it. Okay. He, yeah. gets, he gets an alligator tag every year to go down there and hunt in South Carolina, not far from where all the lizard man stuff actually happens. And they were down there, and I want to say he said it was like two to three feet of water, not no more than four feet, and they got a 500-pound alligator. Never knew it was there until it kind of come up from the surface. Now, some uh, an alligator that's 500 pounds is probably going to be at least 10-ish feet. That's a big gator. Yeah. Yeah. And they never knew it was there. So... I would think that it would be very, if these things, because if you look at any kind of reptile that swims, whether it be Komodo dragons, goannas, monitor lizards, crocodiles, alligators, any of those, they swim pretty much in the same, same way. Legs tucked back, front arms tucked in front of them and, you know, using their tail for, for the propulsion. And they also still, come up to the top of the water pretty much the same way just because their nostrils and their eyes are all situated pretty much the same way on top of their head because whether they live most of their life on land or in the water they're they're set up to survive both ways so if if these things are like that or set up like that then it would be very possible for these things to be in these swamps and nobody ever see them unless they wanted to be seen right wow. I want to take a big, uh, take a second, take, give a big shout out uh, to uh, Big V, to uh, Sentinel himself, Mr. Robert Miller, and Dwayne Melton for the super chats. Thank you guys so much. You guys, Thanks, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Sentinel. That's right. Slanja. Let's go. Hey, I'll drink anything. Well, it's funny you should mention. Robbie, that about you know, about it being able to hide in just a couple of feet of water. Um, when 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 and then the uh, the kid whose car uh, when he was changing the tire he also got attacked. Um, you know th those could be you know perfect ambush predator in that that, that shallow amount of water. Uh, but some of the encounters that people have had have been the well every time we get a, a lizard man encounter it's always aggressive, um, mm -hmm. and, and it makes you wonder if you know if it's not just because it's aggressive if if they were intending to eat the people um so you know you know, we can argue that one way or the other but you know maybe there are other attacks that didn't get away and what well, like you always say about the missing 411 you, you know maybe those are the ones that took the shot yeah you know, the the we will never know the ones that that didn't get away because they didn't get away. Right. You know, I've got to thinking, you know, here in Missouri, we don't officially have any gators. So, you know, I don't have a whole lot of data about gator attacks. But uh, I know in, you know, like the Marshway National Forest and some of these places, you know, it's not uncommon to get attacked by coyotes while you're trying to change a tire. Right. You know, 
pack, pack of three or four of them will come up and, you know, they'll try to get you. Uh, when my brother was a deputy in Washington County, he had a pack of four of them try to come up on him when he was taking a piss outside his police car. And fortunately, he had the foresight to take his, uh, you know, shotgun with him. And uh, he put one in the chest of the uh, Alpha and the rest took off. And then his ears rang the rest of his shift. But, you know, he didn't turn into coyote shit. So I guess that was worth it. And here's the thing, you know, what like what you just said, DA, about, you know, the aggressive. These things are reptilian in nature. You know. Reptiles gen in general do not make good pets for the fact that they're not they're not like canines. I know people have them as pets, so don't you know don't come at me in the comments. I understand that, but the, it's not like a dog that you can just you know. And there are exceptions, but for the most part, reptiles are going to do what reptiles are going to do. That's why exactly. you don't see a whole lot of people ha if they have crocodiles or alligators or things like that, they keep them in a in a locked facility. And it, it's not like they go in there and oh, lay down. Hey, buddy, hey, you scratch your head. Like if they do, they you know they come back with a nub. So it, that when we're talking about things like uh, Bigfoot or Dogman, there's an intelligence there, and I'm not saying there's not an intelligence to these these lizard men, but I would think they would be on a more base level instinct type thing of yeah. I mean, how we had, we, had, we had a dude here in Denver area get killed by his pet Gila monster. Uh, Would you want a Gila monster as a pet? Oh, I don't know, but I mean, it's got. I mean, they're not notoriously fast, so that that's going to be kind of like getting run over by a freaking zamboni, you know, on out, out on the ice. Um, but it, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a rare thing. It's a rare thing. Uh, but he people did. don't realize how how toxic their venom is, though. Absolutely, right? yeah. And, and because, they're so, because they're so laid back looking, people don't think anything right. about it. But when them things right. latch onto you, you, you can't get them off. Number You're one, done. they just sit there and chew and chew and chew, and they just the more they chew, the more venom, yep. the more you get envenomated. So are they? Do they actually pack venom, or is their bite like the Komodo dragon right. that it's just so toxic? They, they, act, they actually they will actually envenomate you. They actually yep. have venom. Has, I'm, uh, sure, I'm sure has, there's some form of that too. Yeah, it has a neurotoxin in it. Like Robbie was saying, they chew it in, and it, they've got these grooves in their in their teeth, and the venom will run down hmm. from the glands into that into that wound. Yeah. It's not like a pit oh. viper where they're the fangs are actually hollow like hypodermic needles. Yeah. I wanted to, wanted to say real quick, uh, thanks, That's Poncho, important. and for everybody else who sponsored the channel. I've just a whole a whole slew of them have been popping up, uh, more of them than I could catch. Just folks, thank you guys so much. And Poncho gifted some subs, so I sure appreciate that. Thank you guys for for supporting the channel. Really appreciate it. Yes. But you know, the thing with open with, coloring books is they've decided the Komodo has venom. I didn't know that. I thought it was just like the enzymes and it's mm. saliva. Uh, I hadn't heard, I'm not yeah. saying that. And I had last I heard is it what kills you with a Komodo is the bacteria that lives inside their mouth. That's why they don't yeah. because they when they bite, they bite and release and then let, let whatever they just bit run off and they will trail it because till it drops. Yeah, until it drops and they just follow it with the with their follow it with their tongue. I, it, Oh, Miss Lene said Dwayne also gifted for, uh, gifted subs. Thank you, Dwayne. I didn't see that. I didn't catch it. Things were popping up so fast. I've missed a bunch of them. Thank you all so much. But the, and that's another thing too though, with the, with these lizard men or things like that. It's possible they could have venom because that is definitely a reptilian type thing. I mean, yeah. it, would, it wouldn't or or the bacteria. And you know, there's speculation about that bacteria if. Does that come from? Is that something that they already ha that they're born with, or does it come from, you know, rotten flesh that is left over in their mouth? I, I don't know. I'm not a herpetologist, so I I don't know the answer to that. Mm. But it wouldn't. I mean, it would be very possible for these things to have venom glands. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, God. Well, thanks. thanks, Sentinel. Appreciate. It. Dude, thank you, man. I wonder if, if these uh, critters are, you know, another proposed, uh, what is it called, a divergent evolution, kind of like a dog band versus, uh, 
you know, dire wolves and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, oh, well, when you think about that, you know, most most of the time when you think about reptiles with venom, snakes are the ones that pop up. And there's, you know, Doc hit, talked about neurotoxin. There's cytotoxin. There's hemotoxin. I mean, it, snakes run the gamut of of what kind of venom that they can put in you and you two know what what each one of those things will do to you and how they will mess you up i mean that's why there is anti-venom is so expensive is because you have to have a specific polyvalent that is going to counteract that specific type of venom because you can't just put you know if you get bit by a king cobra you can't just put you know just any type of yeah, anti-venom for a rattlesnake is yeah. totally different than for a cobra yeah, and it's because of the different types of toxin. I mean, you got hemo versus neuro, and if you put the wrong one in, you're doing just as much damage as the venom itself is doing. And then spider venom I mean, is even different than that. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, the thing. So, well, then you run the risk of having an anaphylactic response and killing them dead anyway. Yeah. So to, to yeah. run that back around to what you just said, DA, is what if these things do have venom and it's a, you know, it's something. Uh, I guess what black mamba is probably one of the most, or was it the green mamba that's called the two step dot? I think that's the green mamba. The one is in. I, mean, the was the, you know, I thought the crate was called the Asian two step. Yeah, you got the yeah. That's well, the, what the, the bamboo, the bamboo the viper is called the two step. The bamboo viper is the one they call yeah. the two step. But the black mamba and the green mamba they all have this, and they're in the same. They're in a the lapid family. They're co they're in the same family as cobras. The, uh, the thing oh. with the sea crates and things like that, they are the most poisonous snakes on the planet, but they are. They're so rare of a chance of getting bit by one of them because of they are in the ocean all the time. They're not on land that much. That's why they most herpetologists don't classify them with the other snakes. Like the fear snake in out in Australia is widely recognized as the most poisonous snake in the world. Even though what you're talking about this, with the sea crate is probably more poisonous than that. But then you get you get into dosage. And depending on how much you get envenomated by whatever snake, I mean, a coral snake, drop for drop, its venom matches up with a cobra. But a cobra is going to give you, a king cobra is going to give you a bigger envenomation bite than a coral snake will. But drop for drop, they match up. I mean, there are different types of venoms, but, it, you know, it, there's so many different factors in that. And that's, what, that's why it's so hard. <laughs> uh, what was it Venom 1 in Miami? Miami Dade is the, yeah. the big, you know, the, they probably got the largest selection of anti venom in the world. Venom, they actually, venom and the venom ER down in Phoenix at the yeah. hospital down there. Uh, Miami Dade, the venom one, that's the one that actually, the there was a guy that got bit during the 9 11 attacks. They're the ones that actually had to get cleared to fly. They were that was the only flight after they shut down. Uh, after huh. FAA shut down, everybody, that was the only flight that flew after all that stuff happened because they had, I can't remember where they had the fly the, uh, to for this guy, but he got bit by, I want to say it was a black mamba and they had to fly the anti-venom across the country just about, and they, that was the, and they had to get like presidential approval to do it. And that was the only flight that flew that day after all that happened. So here's a question for you, knowing that, Komodo dragons have this toxin and they're one of the largest, if not the largest lizard species and Gila monsters have it. Do you think lizard men have it? I would say it'd be very possible. And like I said, there again, what, I don't know that they've actually nailed down what causes this. It could be just something that festers in their mouth from. Yeah. I mean, that's possible, right doc? Steve, absolutely, it is. I, I, I would, oh. I would say there's a big, there's a strong possibility that they have, they have uh, venom. Absolutely. Yeah. Captain Delgado says, "Where do you think the lizard man and the reptilians come from?" Well, I guess we need to answer that question that was asked earlier now, and I think yeah. there are two different, two yeah. different distinct distinct types mm -hmm. i think there's the reptilians which are an alien species that have been seen in association with numerous Uf ufo encounters including on military bases uh and then the, there's lizard men which i think probably evolved somewhere deep in the earth yeah i think 
reptilian is what you know when they talk about when you see all these uh conspiracy videos and i'm not saying i disagree or don't dis or or agree with them but you see all those talking about the the people high up in power and things like that that's usually when you hear people say the word reptilian and you know alien in nature and shape-shifting and all that kind of stuff that's usually where you hear that term mm -hmm. when you hear the term that, that man, lady on the on that airplane video that is not real yep yeah, yeah. i love so, that video that's generally where you hear that term from and then when you hear lizard man you're it's a creature out in the woods and the swamps and things like that it's just and most of most of what i've heard it described like and the best way i can describe it is i know there i know there's comic book fans out there but if uh the spider-man uh villain uh connor's the lizard yeah, man, lizard yeah, man. Dr. Con Connors. That's pretty much what most of them describe him looking, looking like. I, in some cases, describing it as an upright, walking on two legs crocodile. Uh, Nathan mm -hmm. Finn says the Cherokee have a legend about lizard people that they drove into caves. The Navajo and the um, uh, there's another tribe, uh, might be the Yavapai Apache, have similar stories of, of of battling lizard creatures and forcing them into caves then collapsing the caves but you, it's, it's uh Nathan Finn's birthday happy birthday man happy birthday dude yeah, happy birthday but you think Stray about Wolf that Ford says lizard men were spotted by US soldiers in Vietnam they've been spotted in a lot of places mm -hmm. that's that's a creature that even if you did run it into a cave and collapse the cave would very well be capable of, as long as they didn't get crushed by right. whatever right. they would very well be able to survive well lizards don't require as much oxygen to operate as we do no i mean it, it, that's what big crocodiles will eat once or twice a month and that's it you know and that and they can they can survive freezing weather i mean it, it, that's why crocodiles and alligators are that are on uh, farms up in the Midwest where they where they get snow and ice, or the ones that have been turned loose. You know, there's videos of their nose and uh, nostrils just above the where the water's froze. As long as their nostrils don't freeze, they survive. There was just a few years ago they found uh, Missouri Department of Conservation found a I think it was four or five foot alligator frozen in the ice with its nose sticking out down here on Lake Taney Coburn, just about thirty miles from here. But I've told that story before. There's um, there's a lake just above me, Laurel and Hardy Lake, and for years people lived around that lake. Was were telling uh, DNR and Pickens County Sheriff's Office, "Hey, there's an alligator in this lake," and th of course DNR being the, you know, it's the same way they are. Everywhere. Nah, yeah, are seeing things. It's a big fish. It's a pike. It's, a, you know, <laughs> whatever. It's not. Well. Finally, one one day, somebody saw it, and one uh, Pickens County Deputy Sheriff just happened to be really close when they got the call, and he showed up and he actually saw it. <laughs> so he he got on got on radio, called dispatch, said, "Get DNR up here right now," and they actually mm -hmm. got up there and they actually ended up catching it. It was like seven and a half, almost eight feet. Because it'd been I wonder what the threshold is for when the DNR officially acknowledges something, you know, like in the you know late nineties so here in Missouri, they didn't acknowledge that we had mountain lions, and then at some point, magically, oh yeah, you mm -hmm. got them. And when when enough eyewitnesses have come in where they can't ignore it anymore, up here, or when people start posting pictures, okay, so he done. said, "Get your butt up here right now." There's an alligator in this pond. So to that end, on the on the the gator being frozen and things like that. When do we see more of a? Do you see more of an uptick of uh, these uh, lizard man reptilian sightings in the warmer months and a downturn in the colder months because they're cold blooded? I would think so. Yeah, I, I haven't looked at the data to see if that's, but I would say that that probably supports it. That you know, yeah. but, uh, and, and two, you know, I think a lot of people are not going to be out in the swamps and when it's really cold e either. So, are we cutting out on sound? Sounds really weird on my end. I, I, I can hear everybody. Yeah. Maybe it's just on my end. Do I sound all right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, and uh, Doc's froze K-H-R-7-9-7 on my screen. Anyway. Seven nine seven says they got them in Lake Lanier in North Carolina. Yeah, I've heard stories about that too. Um, mm. they, they're all stuff like that's all over the place. And if you can have gators and crocodiles and things like that in these places, I mean, and they can go go for years without being seen or yeah or messed with. Well, considering well, yeah, they spend a good chunk of their time on the bottom of the of the of the water, like laying on the on the bottom, waiting for prey to just drift by. Yeah, they don't really need to spend a whole lot of time on the surface unless they're sunning themselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was having a little concerning thought as we were talking there. You know, I was uh, reading an article not too long ago that some uh, paleontologists are thinking that they're that some of the dinosaurs might have been warm blooded. Your really scary damn thought if these lizard critters could be as well. That changes the whole dynamic. Well, yeah, because yeah. yeah. if they're if they're like chickens, you know, because chickens are definitely warm blooded. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you know, oh. if you look at it, a lot of the things that we thought were cold blooded at one point, we've learned mm-hmm. that they're homeothermic, which means they hold their temperature like great white sharks. They're not cold blooded. Right, you know, there was it endothermic or homeothermic, whichever one that uh, it holds their body temperature holds like fifteen or twenty degrees higher than their outside environment. So that's why you can find, you know, things like great white sharks in the Atlantic Ocean in places around New York where it's really cold, the water's really cold, where they don't t- typically go, but they can survive there. So if it's something like that, where they have that built into their system, where they can survive where other things that that are similar to them can't. Hey, boys, we're at the bottom of the first hour already, and time's going by pretty quick. So we space these things out so we don't do them all at once. Robbie, why don't you tell us a little bit about Scalawag Tactical, and then we'll uh, hear from Doc at the top of the hour. Don't forget the, uh, the, the special announcement from them. Yep, got it. Let me get my handy-nandy little little knife here from uh, our good friends at Scallywag Tactical. Just a little knife. This is the Bounty. One of their blades that they've got that you can get your hands on from Scallywag Tactical. Or like DA's got, the Dew Claw, the Jolly Roger. Doc's going to bring up his uh, Mini Jack, which is a... Steve's got... You got the Mini Jack or the Private Which one do you have, Steve? I can't even remember. I've got the mini jack, the privateer, and uh, one of the Jolly Rogers. I've got the black Jolly Roger. Yep. So, Scallywag is a veteran owned company, just like all of our other affiliates. They make some of the best blades that you could ever get your hands on. They're, they'll compete with any of the big box brands, the Spider Co's, the Shrades, the Kershaws, you name it. You're gonna pay a lot more for that name that you're gonna than you're gonna pay for one of these scallywags, and these are gonna be just as good, if not better. And right now, listen to this one. Right now, they've brought back their blemish blades because DA and I were just looking at them before we all got on here. They've got some good knives in the blemish blade section, which you know normally that's a pretty good deal anyway. And you use code DA Roberts ten, you get a ten, you get ten percent off that. But now. Just for you guys, just for our audience, our people in the chat, our family, he's going to give you 20% off of that when you use code DA Roberts 10 to the end of April. It's just for it's him saying, you know, thanks for all we do for him. He's passing that on to y'all because they got a bunch of new blades coming out. So, until April, you use code DA Roberts 10, you'll get an extra 20% off your purchase. Including the blemish blades. Yeah, including the blemish blades. And DA and I were doing some math on them before uh, Steve and Doc joined. There's there's some good savings in that, folks. Yeah. Yeah, there is. If you ever wanted to get you a scallywag and you've been kind of waiting and whatever, right now is the time to do it because it's gonna, only going to go to the end of April. DA Roberts 10 at checkout. Go check them out. Tell them we sent you. And that's all I got to say about that. Again, remember, it's 20% off now through the end of April. 
And Rock 10, no, I did not see a bounty on the blemish blades. They got it, but not on the blemish blades. Yeah, it's in stock, but they don't have any blims. Miss Lene says, I'm going to be doing some shopping. <laughs> Heck yeah. Oh, Super right. Chat from 3D Havoc. Hey, man, thank you so much. We've had some awesome Super Chat tonight. Thank That's you, awesome. folks. Yep. Well, we're at 171 watching. So that's heck nice. yeah. That's one well, of them. You know, we talked about Skateboard Swamp, and there's another famous a famous lizard man sighting. And coincidentally, it was also near water and it also attacked people. And that was the Lake Worth monster just near San, uh, near uh, uh, Fort Worth, Dallas. Texas. Yeah, Dallas, Dallas Fort Worth. Yep. That one was pretty interesting because they're still seeing people still report seeing it even today. Uh, it it has attacked people in their car in their cars. It allegedly threw a, a, a tire at somebody, like they had left a, like a tire out in the woods, and it picked it up and chucked it like 50, 60 yards at a car at a group of people. Uh, it's chased people, you know. But then again, you know how many people did not get away? And, and if you can happen, if you can chuck a tire fifty or sixty yards, I don't know if I want to tangle with yeah. it. Yeah, no I'll, kidding. I'll I can chuck. I can. I can chuck a, 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 a empty tire across the yard, but I ain't chucking one half to half a football field. Yeah, that's a that's a good chuck right there. And it probably that's wasn't going to feel very good, good when it hit out. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, time to get out. I'm going. Time to unask the guy over there. Yeah, you ain't wrong. Kodiak T Bone says, "Hey guys, love your show. Thank you, Kodiak. Welcome to the welcome to the group, man. Thank love you. to have you. Welcome. And you know that one. The descriptions are very much like the, the Lizard Man Escape or Swamp. Um, you know, but of course, you know, you know how how much you're going to get with a, a bipedal lizard. But then again, they also said it it looked very much like." You know, a lizard man, like a like a reptile with a tail and and and, a, and a, like elongated snout. Um, so almost, I mean, you take like a, a komodo dragon and stand it up and mm -hmm. bulk it up, and you know, make its front limbs into more like it's exactly Doc. No, no, yeah, yeah. But that that's what I mean that. that the most of the witness descriptions that you look at, I mean, you, you take a Komodo dragon and stand it up on its hind legs and bulk it up, give it hands instead of claws on its forelimbs. That's what you, that's what well, you're looking at. And if it brings its tail to the game, that's, I mean, think about how dangerous a four foot tall kangaroo is because of that damn tail. You know? Yeah. What, what about a 500 pound standing croc? And lizard men, with the same description, again, also near water in a swampy area, are reported in the Hockamock Swamp of uh, the Bridgewater Triangle in, in Massachusetts. Well, hmm. you just think about Massachusetts. it. Massachusetts. The Komodo Massachusetts. dragon, a big Komodo dragon from tip of the snout to the end of the tail, can be over 10 feet long. So if you stand that thing up on its hind legs, you're looking at about seven-ish feet anyway. Six and a half, seven feet, which is about about the description height that a lot of people give that thing. So, is this thing a freaking mutated Komodo dragon type thing? That's freaking scary to think if it is. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, and, and, and it's it's just uh, it's something that big. Okay, I mean let's 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 think about this. Let's think about how. We're talking about venom and everything like that. Let's think about how dangerous snakes are. You know, rattlers, copperheads, water moccasins, things like that. How fast they can move. And they don't even have arms and legs. Now let's think these things are 500, 600 pounds, six, six and a half feet tall. They got that kind of venom. They got speed and strength. And they got arms and legs. And the one near uh, Skateboard Swamp kept pace with a car up to about 40 miles an hour. Well, there's more nightmare fuel right there. <laughs> Holy crap. Well, and you know, the, we were talking about the distinction between, you know, these reptilians and, and, you know, the lizard people or whatever, you know, there are some people that, that believe that the ones that we've been seeing at those military bases and whatnot 
actually evolved here, you know, uh, uh, the Silurians. And, uh, you know, the descriptions of some of those are that they have at least human intelligence. That's, that's a whole... <laughs> well, a whole there's, lot a TV, of there's a TV show about that back in the 80s, wasn't there? It's called V. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. V. I yeah. love that show. That's I good well, or even worse, if they came from space, you know, they've got some kind of faster than light travel, which makes them hella scary. Let, let's add some more nightmare fuel to Doc since we hadn't done enough. Okay. You know what Florida's going through now with all the with all the invasive uh boa constrictors or pythons rather that got you know excommunicated from their cages yeah with that hurricane the hurricane that hit yeah. now they're uh, they've taken a foothold they're, they're in and they're a keystone species and they're wreaking havoc to the Florida Everglades we know that right yeah well they're like a couple of years after that happened, somebody in South Carolina said, well, we ain't got to worry about them coming up here. But, you know, they, they can't survive the winter. Don't know that this is 100% accurate or not, but I heard that the, at the uh, old nu there was an old nuclear plant somewhere down there that got shut down. They had one of them pits, and they said, well, we're going to see. So they put a bunch of them damn snakes down there in that pit to see if they'd survive. And guess what? They survived. They survived the winter. But what I didn't hear is what they did with them, and if every one of them got, if they got every one of them out, would have been dropping diesel fuel and grenades. So why? It, there's people studying that kind of stuff. So, but why? I, God, oh my! Mm. You 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 think that eventually we would learn that just because we can do something doesn't mean it's a good idea that we should do something. Exactly. Just because you can, don't mean you should. Yep. Ian Malcolm's uh, best advice. <laughs> You're so preoccupied with whether or not you could, you didn't stop to think whether you should. Slee stacks, man. Oh, that thing scared the, the piss out of me. When I was a kid, those things were terrifying. Oh, my and God. A, and that looked just like the thing that Captain Kirk fought. Oh, the Gorns, yeah. The Gorns. That's right. <sighs> well, the, the new Gorns are even scarier. 3D Havoc. Doc, what suggestions would you have for venom bites? Get to a hospital quickly. ASAP. That I mean, that's it. That's not me being not me being flip, man. I'm I'm just saying don't but adding to that, Doc, you don't you're not supposed to tourniquet those, don't right? Don't tourniquet it, don't put ice on it, any of that horse crap like that. What about the old um, suck the poison out. No, that you, you, it's, it's, it don't. You don't don't cut an accent. Don't suck the poison out. Don't turn it. They, they even a, got a. Don't use a stun gun. They've even got away from pressure bandages now because that's on that only works for some uh, certain species, and a lot yeah. of that's the species that you find over in Australia, right? That's exactly where that study came from. Yeah, and yeah. so yeah, if you get envenomated by a snake here in the states, just get to a hospital as quick as you can, man. Uh, and keep that. Uh, Try to stay calm. Yeah, it, typically it's an extremity because you know people get bitten from like elbow down they're reaching in or knee to foot because they're re stepping over something uh just keep that part immobilized as best you can and get to the hospital that's it that's all you got to do try man. to keep your heart rate down because the faster it beats the faster it circulates yeah. yeah yeah and those little extractor pumps you might as well just take that twenty dollars and wipe your butt with it because and, and flush it down a toilet that's about what is it what it is so well, and I, I saw a herpetologist give a, a lecture on that one time. She said, you know, the thought process behind sucking the venom out at that time frame, based on the knowledge that we had, you know, it was what it was. She said, but you think about it, it's not a capsule that the snake's putting inside your, the body. It, it's, the venom is being injected. You're not, when you start sucking that, you're not going to get all the poison out but you're not even gonna get let me put it this way in the study they did it, it removed 0 0.02 percent of the venom from around the bite not what's been injected into the circulatory system so well and the other side of that too is you know the stuff is dangerous enough when it gets into your muscles and and fat and stuff like that what kind of damage is it going to do to the elementary canal of the person that's sucking the shit out 
Well, there's a lot of, of that, blood vessels under your tongue that go straight to your bloodstream. Yeah, and think about if you've got an open wound in your mouth. I mean, you you bit your tongue or something like that. And you tooth. just ventilated yourself. Yeah. Yep. You know, and no. I've been, I've never been envenomated. I've never been bit by a venomous snake. I've been bit by non-venomous snakes. Bit by a black snake a couple of times. Yeah. That was my own fault. Yeah, I, I've been bit by a couple of my uh, constrictors that I used to have. Used to have, Doc. Don't have them anymore. I was a young, dumb kid then. But uh, I could imagine... Because even the experience that I have, because I've been messing with snakes my entire life. I mean, it's just, I'm scared to death of spiders, but snakes don't bother me. I, I know where a snake's mouth is. That's why I, but <laughs> even knowing the things that I know, getting bit by a constrictor and knowing there's no venom or no nothing like that, it still, I don't understand how you're supposed to keep yourself calm if you get a hot bite. No. I, that, this, no. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm probably going to die. The little bastards chew on you. Yeah. I'll die of yeah. heart attack if that ever happened to me. Mm. Yeah. I'm terrified of them. Irrationally so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, man. Yeah, my, my old roommate had a had a uh, uh, a boa, I think it was a speckled, speckled or spectacled boa, you know, it's two or three feet long. And I was feeding the thing one time when he was out of town and the damn thing took a bite of my, you know, back of my hand. And, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of teeth to it, but this stupid thing just kept on, you know, munching and like, just like insult to injury. Well, what it was trying to do, Steve, it wasn't munching to do it. it Pythons, bulk constrictors, things like that, they have those recurved teeth. So when it hit mm -hmm. and bit you, its teeth were latched in. So that chewing was it trying to get them teeth loose. It wasn't that it was chewing on you to uh -huh. keep adding insult to injury. It was trying to get it because you weren't what it wanted. It hit you and its teeth Realized got Realized it couldn't up. swallow you. Yeah, and it was yeah. that was that motion of it trying to get it because it was doing this, right? It was moving its head side to side like this. Yep. It was trying to unhook its teeth <clears> from your skin. Yeah, Suck I think because it, it, it's our probably but, tried to. Here's a, here's well, a question tried to for our two the pinky mouse. I was holding that it missed. Here's a question for our two medical aficionados down here, Steve and Doc. Um, okay, let's say a lizard man is like a Komodo dragon. If you were to get bit by something like that, what would you do? Uh, bend over and kiss his grass. How long do you think somebody would have? We heard it in stereo. We both said the exact same thing. Great minds think alike, and so do we. Yeah, because well, I mean, uh, just think about know, the level of envenomation from something that freaking huge. Well, there's Seriously. they don't have any kind of. Well, number one, if, if it is venomous, they haven't found any kind of anti venom for it because it's just been found out that it was venomous, to my knowledge, because I just found it out tonight, and that's. Again, well, I'm not a herpetologist, well, but I mean, I, I, and I, if it's a lizard man, there's no anti venom for. And what kind of and what kind of venom does it even carry? Yeah, I mean, yeah. and the venom load would the venom load would, would be a would be a systemic overload, man. It, yes, Kodiak, oh, yeah. uh, scorpions have venom. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, if it, especially the, the damn thing outweighs you. I mean, I'm a you know 225 pound man, a 500 pound lizard man would definitely be able to drop me. Is that have they, a uh, they terrifying have thought? I have a terrifying thought that is definitely going to make its way into a book. What if it's just a paralytic and they eat you while you're still alive? You're a oh sick God. man. Getting locked in. Like there was a you doubt know, about that, Doc. Come on. Well, that, I mean, look at spiders. Yeah. There's plenty of spiders that already do on. that. Oh, yeah. Mm. I, there, there's, there's like sick probably hundreds of spiders that that's how their venom works. And, and Maybe you should even do it like this, DA. Maybe have it vomit gastric acid upon the flesh to help the to help slowly dissolve the bones in the uh, flesh so they can eat it better, like like a fly. I was just about to say, Ugh. help me, help me. Yeah, yeah that, there's definitely going to be some fly. lizard folks showing up in a book. I figured, you'd, I figured you'd like that, you sicko. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, I, I'm waiting to see what happens to the uh, the book doc. It's or so how he. Uh, 
<laughs> well, yeah, what happened? What happens? What do, what do lizard men like snowmobiles? Giant nope, it had to be. Nope, it's gonna be. It's gonna happen in South Texas. It's gonna be a dock and a lizard man and a jet ski. There you go. Not right. ATV. I'm, I'm <laughs> I can hear Gray Eagle now. Doc, what is it with you in power sports? Cryptus and power sports dot don't mix. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I'm just glad Steve stays behind the bar. You know his his biggest concern is going to be cirrhosis. <laughs> that you know of. Right. Oh crap! <laughs> All those artifacts in the bar may come in handy sometime. <laughs> True. Oh, Dwayne Melton's got a question and a super chat. Thank you, Dwayne. Uh, he says, do you think they have a weak spot, kind of like Gators do on Swamp People when they finish them off with a twenty two long rifle? You know, I, I would say probably. Uh, you know, much like Gators, that, that that skin is almost like armor. And I've I've seen seen shows where they shot at a, a gator with a 30 out six and it bounced off the skull, just skipped off. Yeah, it took a chunk of skin with it, but it skipped off like a rock off of water. I would say if you're going to shoot one, you better be damn careful of where well, you're shooting. If this thing has osteoderms like 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 gators and crocs and caimans and things like that, then yeah. If it just has skin like the scales, just like you know, you, snakes or komodos or things like that, then it's not it's not going to be as armored. So I guess it really depends on what does this thing take after. What is it? Was it more like? If it's more like you know a crocodilian then yeah it's probably gonna be armored because that's what those osteoderms are pretty armored on their backs but the salt the underbellies of all those right. suckers are the are the weak points so does it have uh, is it encased in armor like thoracic armor abdominal armor things like is it sectioned or jointed you know who knows well, crocs and gators and things like that only have those osteoderms on their back so but who knows what prehistoric ones had i mean it, you know when they were having to they were having to worry about getting snatched up by big bigger land predators they may have had something well, and, like that their underside and if they're intelligent you know are they smart enough to up armor themselves right i mean we, we've seen the the things about the the gugways and everything with armor up armor and themselves kind of like that movie mm -hmm. rage or yeah. primal rage or whatever or Great like movie. Uh, like the Genosqua, rolling, rolling in, in coating themselves with tree sap and then rolling in rocks. Yeah, but I think uh, and the penny van just hit it on the head. If the lizard band walk up right, they have to have some sort of torso protection. That's kind of what my thinking is. You know, but they would cool. have yeah. very thick leather like hide. That too. Yeah, and, and it, the thing is, if if they have some type of intelligence, they're going to know that that that's vulnerable. 50 BMG API or a Rolfus round. No. Is it fan? Oh, so the, is that the blue tips? <laughs> One of them spicy rounds. <laughs> spicy. spicy. Kentucky oh. Ballistic Special. Robbie, you mentioned earlier the three toed tracks found down in Falk, Arkansas. Oh, yeah. Let's see some. Um, I don't. I don't have any pictures from Falk, Arkansas. They were just they were reported. Uh, oh. they were from a bean field. There were, were three toed tracks with claws. Um, when I first heard about that, I thought, you know, it, maybe it's just a you know a, a gator track because that is a swampy area. I've been down in that area. That is a swampy area. Uh, Robbie's been down there, fair, more recently than I have. Um, but. We got the, yeah, we've got the the um, the Hockamock Swamp and the Bridgewater Triangle in Massachusetts. Then we've got North Carolina, the uh, the Escape War Swamp, South Carolina, so and, it's South War. Carolina. I'm sorry. And then you know we've got farther down in Texas. If you follow the geographical features, what does that follow? The waterway follows, follows the waterways in the same path that the mammoth cave systems follow. 
Every one of those are on the... Because they're postulating that the Mammoth Cave systems run from Maine to southern New Mexico. That would draw a line right through every one of those locations. And they have underwater tributaries through that system as well. Yes, they, could, they do. They could, there are deep underwater aquifers that God knows how deep yeah. or how far they go. And these things could potentially use that as a inter, interstate system, so right. to speak. Darcy, I think I think a lot of cryptids do. Answer Darcy's question. Gators have four on the front, on the back, and five on the front. They have a different number See, of toes on the front and the back. Since the Tom line. Arkansas is a little closer than I'd like it to be, I'm going to work on the assumption that that three-toed track is from a, uh, you know, redneck with diabetes, because uh, diabetes. that's a lot. Uh, that feels a little better to me than you know, a seven-foot tall lizard person. <laughs> better hope so. Uh, Josh Dalton says, DA, what about the Great Dismal Swamp on the Virginia-North Carolina line? I don't know of any sightings from that area. I have not researched that area, but it would not surprise me. Poncho says, Tanner, right? <laughs> but, oh, well, here's the thing. and We just we said it earlier, DA. There, you know, How many people have encountered this thing that we've never even heard? Because they ain't here. The, the visual encounters we do have are violent. What if what if the, the, the other encounters haven't been reported because nobody survived? Mm -hmm. They done got it, Doc. They're all lizard poop. It's back on the menu, boys. <laughs> Just say it. It's a factual thing. Yeah. Because I think that yeah, we're we're we're, we're foolish to think that we're the top of the food chain. Yeah. Well, it, but like we, you know, we we we've, we've drawn this comparison when we were talking about Dogman and Bigfoot. You know, like, oh, some Bigfoot encounters are, oh, Harry and the Hendersons, and some are like, oh my God, Primal Rage. Even some Dogman encounters are like, oh man, that you had one day. Yeah. We just looked at yeah. you. Yeah, just, just looked at us and took like, off. I, yeah, it some wasn't like, a oh dangerous God, encounter. I've never heard a lizard man encounter. It's been like, oh man, that was pretty cool. It's always been like, oh my god, that thing was gonna rip my head exactly. off. Exactly, that thing was exactly. trying to eat me. Yeah, yeah. that freaking thing chased my car and tried to rip, rip it. Have you ever heard of a piece of a piece Didn't of it jump on encounter. that guy on that guy the roof of that guy's car? Yeah, do what? Didn't it jump on the roof of his yeah. car? Well, I mean, it's like a piece of a car. A peaceable dog man encounter. I mean, all those are mean sons of bitches. But but yeah. there's been some dog man encounters that, like DAs that were just. Oh, he just looked at him and ran off. There's never been a, that I've heard anyway, a lizard man encounter where it's been like, oh, well, it just looked at me and ran off. It's always been like, this well, even the Native American stories of lizard, to, lizard now, creatures, here, they talk here, about going here. to war with them. Yeah. Really? There's none of the stories of like them, you know, trading with another tribe of Bigfoot. If in, the, the, the every story I've found, I've found uh, where Native Americans talk of lizard like creatures, they talk of fighting a war with them and driving them below ground. Dirty sons of bitches. So, I mean, like I said, <laughs> there's no gray area when it comes, there's gray area of, of, of plenty on Bigfoot, kind of <laughs> sort of on Dog Man. You get, you, you get some. But lizard man is just it, every encounter that I've ever heard or read about. It's always been aggressive. It's always been this thing tried to tear my head off. This thing tried to chase my car down. This thing, you know, tried to make me lizard poop. <laughs> and so when we talk about lizard people not liking humans, Thomas Gershwin has a good point too. Um, the same goes with the alien rept reptilians. The stories we hear about those the reptilians are here because they're looking for food. Much like V. That V don't stand for vegan. Exactly. It stands for very delicious. <laughs> and flesh. <laughs> well, maybe you'll look at you'll find some that are health conscious and they'll be eating vegans. Thank you, Miss Lene. We're folks, we're at the top of the hour. Uh, I'm going to pop little old Doc up on the big uh, the big screen here and let Doc tell us a little bit about Dark Angel Medical. And uh, then I'm going to step away for just a moment and get myself a refill of some sweet tea. Doc, you want to tell us a little bit about... Uh, let me uh, move this around and pop, uh, pop up the... Here we go. I'll put that over us. All right, Doc. It's all you, brother. 
Well, hello, everybody. I sell med kits and med kit accessories. Uh, <laughs> so, <clears throat> no, thank you. Uh, Dark Angel Medical is a company I started uh, several years ago, back in 2011. It's a better known, uh, disabled veteran known small business. We're very proud to uh, provide uh, trauma kits and education to people around the United States. Uh, we're going to be teaching a lot of classes all over the U.S. this year. So if you head over to our website uh, at darkangelmedical.com, uh, check out our training schedule, check out some of our products. Our products are FSA, HSA eligible. So if you've got one of those accounts, you can utilize that to purchase some of those products. And also, if you use one of our products to save someone's life, whether it's yours or someone else's, we'll replace what you use absolutely free of charge. That's not a problem at all. Um, and we're very proud to uh, have been a part of uh, uh, changing the lives or giving people another birthday for another 176 people over the last 13 years. So something we, we stand on, we're proud of, and we're blessed to be able to do what we love. So uh, if you use Cryptid25, uh, use that code for the next month. Uh, so at the end of April, just like Scallywag, that code will be going away. Uh, and we'll be having to drop our percentage down because our costs have gone up tremendously over the last year and uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to we're gonna have to drop our discount because we just don't have the margins that we, to provide a better to provide, provide that big discount so use cryptid 25 for 25 percent off your order um if you have any questions shoot us an email to info at darkangelmedical.com and uh like I, guess, like I said check out that website look at our training uh because the best time to have the training is and the products is before something bad happens because life comes at you uh, pretty fast. So thank y'all very much. That's all I got to say about that. Hey, mama. Thank you, doc. Thank y'all. Appreciate you. I had another super chat. Uh, we had, where was it? I got to find it real quick. Uh, saw it just a second ago. There we go. Miss Lori Barnes gave us a super chat. Thank, Thank you, you so Lord. much. We appreciate you too. Thank you so much. Uh, hey, here's a good, here's an interesting comment. Uh, KHR 797 says the sheriff of Lee County did have to get involved due to lizard man search and heard it was kept hush up, hush hush feds involved. But shortly before all the publicity, there was something brought out of the swamps. Huh. Hey, well, the, sheriff got in, the sheriff got involved, but that was because people were making reports. Not, and he was, yeah. Probably hmm. lost your audio. Did it again. Damn satellite. Yep. Robbie, Robbie, be right back. We lost Robbie's audio. He looks so uh, disgusted. He he's about an hour like, in. It's about just like so all so put off, man. Damn it. He's <laughs> like you can hear you can almost hear the sigh. I know. Oh, it's, it's always about an hour in. Usually usually last he usually can last till towards the end and then Well, it went about a month where it didn't do it at all. And then bang, here it come back. That's bizarre. All right, Robbie. Say something. Anyway. There we go. What I was saying was, I, I know the sheriff got involved. I see him. He got involved because people kept coming out and saying. Right. Well, oh, there he goes. Huh? I'll be right. I'll be right back. I got to run the little boys' room. Right. So he got. He did get involved. I, I I know the kid that got killed later on, the one that the thing attacked his car. They went. To, him and his dad went to the sheriff's office in Lee County and, and file that report, but they did it after the other woman filed her report. So his, his, like I said before, his encounter actually happened first. She went and, uh, filed that report. Then he saw that and was like, you know, that that's almost identical to what happened, uh, to, you know, to me. So, you know, it was such a nice, nice stretch. <laughs> Of time, <laughs> and I didn't have to deal with midgets talking bad about me. But all of a sudden, 
You know, they're like a little gnat that keeps flying around. It's oh, like no time that. passed at all. A kitten pops in and bang. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right to I me. Didn't Thanks, the chat until then. <laughs> that uh, was like a. But what, did he uh, work with the snipers when he was in law enforcement? I, I think he did, and he just totally picked yeah. you off from like a Maybe thousand for meters. A short time. He might have worked with the snipers, but it was just a small assignment. Anyway. <laughs> Love you, Ken. Short range sniper. <laughs> yeah, he was a short range sniper. <laughs> <God. Ooh. laughs> oh, that was almost a spit take. Uh, oh, I love Ken. Sorry about <laughs> that. <laughs> anyway, where was I at, DA? We were talking about uh, the the people that the people that had uh, the had reported oh, to the sheriff, even the sure. guy that was mysteriously killed. Yeah. He, like I said, he, his encounter actually happened before the elderly woman. And then he saw that. He's like, hey, that, he tells us that that's exactly, uh, that's exactly what happened to me. You know, it did the same thing to her car that it did to mine. Maybe I should go tell somebody. So him and his dad went to the sheriff and they reported. And, you know, that's when all the, the, there was three boys, and I think one of them was tied into the local government somehow. They kind of faked some some footprints, and that was found out that they hoaxed that. But then there was like four or five other reports that came in at the same time. So there was like there was like a truckload of reports that came in. A couple of them were found to be hoaxed, and then ones like the the young boy that ended up dying later on the elderly woman and like four or five others, there, there was no way they, they couldn't, they couldn't explain them away or anything. So, so what, what, what happened with the mysterious deaths? So the, the woman that made the first report, she died of a mysterious heart condition or heart attack or heart failure. Something was mysterious about how they, how they listed it. And it, there's some, and I can't remember the name of the book, or the guy who wrote the book, but there, and it, he's a fairly famous guy. And I can't want to, I just can't remember why I can't call it to mind right now. Cause me and Lance talked about it, but he wrote a whole book on just the people who have died that had had these sightings and thinks that there's something to do with it. And like I said, the home invasion was the one was the boy that had the car, his car attacked while he was driving home. Hmm. Um, so, it's, there's just there's a lot of strange and I don't want to say foul play because it, there was nothing that ever could tie it to say oh yeah this was a hundred percent this but there was just a lot of strange sur things surrounding but all the deaths because like I said the when the guy went down he actually talked to the boy before he died and then when he went back and talked to him again that's when he found out that he he had been mysteriously killed in a home invasion when nothing was stolen or anything like that. So that's just, it's weird. And Doc, get you boy. He first time he's back on, he's already back on me. You know, Ken, Ken popped in and went he's after Robbie short, already. He got a short fuse. <laughs> I didn't even see this post. <laughs> it was right after you disappeared. Oh, <laughs> Ken said Rob, Robbie was doing so good with the big words tonight. <laughs> hey, Robbie, ain't ain't you glad we got a cheerleader like Ken in our corner? Oh, he's, oh man, he, we we missed you, Ken. I'd hate to have him for my damn enemy. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> was, what was uh, that on the short circuit uh, with friends like this? Who's needing enemas? Yeah, <laughs> who needs an enema? Oh Lord, that's funny. Uh, yeah, you can always you tell your friends because they're the ones that bust your balls. Absolutely, yeah. mercilessly. Yes, I guess Ken really loves me. Oh, he does. <laughs> You're very special to him, I'm sure. I know. I know. I'm. <laughs> I'm, I'm very special to Ken. I love you, Ken. Um. 3D Havoc says, uh, Casey Calloway had a good question. 
where else in the world are lizard men sighted? You know, huh. I haven't really paid too much attention to lizard man sightings around the world, but it wouldn't surprise me to to, to hear they're sighted all over the place. I know uh, I have heard of stories out of Australia where lizard men type creatures have been seen. Uh, and I think they, they're spotted in parts of Japan as well. But I will have to do some digging to 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 find out more than that. I mostly when that when I did was doing research for this show, mostly was just looking at you know sightings here in the U.S. Yeah, you know, when you mentioned Japan, I immediately was thinking of Godzilla, and that's scares the shit out of me. Can you imagine like a three hundred foot tall lizard man? Gojira, Gojira. Got another super chat from Lori Barnes. She said, "Cheers, Slanta." Thank you, Lori. Well, and we all know, you know, Godzilla was, he was made because of the nuclear holocaust and things like that. It wasn't specifically tied to anything like what we're talking about, but there's been, think about the creature from the Black Lagoon. Look at. Look at what that is. I mean, that kind of really ties in to what we're talking about. It lived in a cave. It was a a upright, you know, walking on two leg type creature that spent a lot of time in the water, but could survive on land. It was very dangerous. And look when that movie came out versus, I mean, that's what the. 50s, 60s, when that came out. Don't make me lie, brother. I mean, it, you you start looking at stuff like that. Like we always say, all these things are based on some form of truth or some form of somebody saw this thing or something happened at some point that they saw or you know or had an encounter with. And yeah, I know Godzilla was mutated in some, certain stories and other stories he wasn't. It just depends on which, you know, if you look at Godzilla 1998, that's, it was a radiated iguana. Right. It depends on which imagination you're talking about. Uh, Ed Testament says in Japan, they're called Kappa. Don't sound quite as scary, but it's still scary. So, my question, I guess, is, I, and I want to get back to the to the Komodo dragon and monitor lizard that type of thing. If if it's something like that, which if I was going to put money on the fact of what this thing is, I would say that it would be more closely related to one of the monitor type lizards, which, you know, Goannas, Komodos, uh, all those are in the monitor family versus crocodile. I would say that's more along the lines of what it's related to or what it's more like. Because if you look at the all the descriptions, like I said, it looks like it's... You, Take a Komodo dragon and stand it up on its hind legs. That's what it looks like. What uh, so, what about the possibility that maybe some smaller species of dinosaur, like raptors, continued to evolve after they thought were to thought were, were thought to have died out? Well, and and that's kind of where I was going. If it's because who's to say that a raptor was not in that same lineage? Well, raptors are yeah. are one of the ones that people believe were were warm blooded as well. Yeah. And they'd have a better chance of surviving, you know, an asteroid or whatever. That they said they probably had. The only thing that uh, they kind of, in in my estimation, kind of goes away from that is the the pack, because most people believe that raptors were pack hunters, and were mm -hmm. and most of these things have been seen as solitary, which most or, monitor most monitor in, lizards are solitary or solitary. In like uh, in Jurassic Park. You only saw the one you were supposed to see. That's true, too. Yeah. I mean, 
Oh, and girl. the raptors were believed to be much smaller than the ones in the movies too. You know, they're more the size of a, you know, like a good sized bird of prey or something like that, rather than, you know, five feet tall, but they've had how many million years? If it's two feet tall, I still don't want to fight one. Well, I mean, if, it, if the thing I, is poisonous and after me, I don't care if it's biting me in the knees. But for the, movie, it. for the movie industry, how scary would a, would a two foot raptor have been? Good right. point. Cheat. Well, you, one, you got one that's bigger than a guy and cheat his speed. That's pretty terrifying. Yeah. I mean, if, if, and, you know, they actually even kind of threw that line in, into, I think it was, Doc, you're muted. World. We couldn't hear you talking there. I think yeah. they even threw that, that line in there, in there for that, that particular thing, what we're talking about. Everything in Jurassic Park is exaggerated. If we'd have made them like they really were, they wouldn't have been as scary and wouldn't have been as, uh, they wouldn't have brought as much money in, in as they do. So we had to make a, you know, bigger teeth, bigger everything. So I think that Bizzle was the whole thing. asks, is, are we saying these lizard men are cryptids that have been here all along? Or are we talking Draco from outer space? I think the answer is probably both. I think there are a type of lizard li a lizard man that evolved here, and I think there's another another type that have come from beyond our system. Well, what of the ones that evolved here were able to breed with the ones that came from space? Yeah, you know there there are some hybrids that end up a hell of a lot bigger than either critter that started the animal. And uh, you know, if you get a uh, a mixed breed dog, you know, typically you know, genetically they're more more healthy. You know, they've got a better assortment of traits than they started with. Yeah. I would, say we're, I would definitely say we're prey. Uh, one of my buddies who's half Japanese, he sent me a, a text just now. He's watching the show. And he said, Japanese giant salamanders can reach up to five feet in length. And they have had documented cases of them grabbing or trying to grab children. Jesus. Right. Oh, that's there's a species terrifying. of giant salamander that lives here in the Ozarks. It's called the Ozarks Hellbender, but the biggest one of those I've ever seen is like three feet long. Yeah, three, three and a half. Um, I mean, I still wouldn't want to, you know, have one bump up against me in shallow water if I didn't know it was coming. I mean, it wouldn't hurt you, but it would still uh, give me a little brown pants moment. Yeah. yeah you see one of those in a river, it it will freak you out. So anyway, I started yeah. blasting. Yeah, I've only I've in, I've seen them like in preserves, like in aquariums and stuff, but I've only ever seen one in the wild. And that yeah. was in the Niagara River up near a place called, called the Big Eddy. It's a it's above Bennett Springs. Yeah, they're yeah. endangered uh, in Missouri. Yeah, if you mess with them, you um, get in a lot of trouble. Oh yeah, yeah. You 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 might as well you know take pot shots at a bald eagle as far as what they'll do to your ass if you do it something wrong. I'm just thinking, you know, with all the all the hype with the, uh, uh, you know, the video games and Minecraft and stuff like that, you know, people are obsessed with like you know oxalotls and stuff like that. <laughs> you went to see a hellbender, you're like, oh, it's an oxalot. Ah! Yeah, <laughs> a little three inch oxalotls end up being a three foot long hellbender. Yeah, sure. So. I mean, you could have anything from, like we said, what the creature from the White Lagoon looks like to Slee Stacks. Yeah, you know, the Slee Stacks, to an upright Komodo dragon, to upright alligator. An upright alligator. Uh, there's just like, so, and that's the thing with reptiles. They're so resilient and they're so hard. I mean, they're probably one of the the most survivable types of creatures on the earth. They can, they can adapt to just about any environment and, and survive. Maybe not right away, jump up the food chain, but they can survive and they can adapt and they can do what they need to do. And it, that's, I guess that's kind of what's the scariest thing about these things is if they, if, if this is, true and these are things things that are running around in the swamps out there you know they've been surviving for hundreds if not thousands if not millions of years 
And we're nothing but, like Doc said earlier, we're nothing but prey. Yeah. I mean, because what can you do to something like that? What can you do? I mean, it's gonna. It's probably got. It's probably like a pit viper. It can probably see you if it's dark. It can probably see you if it's daylight. It can. It can sense your body heat. If it bites you, like if it's like a komodo dragon, it can. It can trail you no matter where you go. You know. If it's like that gator and skateboard, it could be in two feet of water and, and, and six feet from you, and you wouldn't know it. Yeah. So, I mean, well, then, and, and how, you, how much time has it had to, to become itself, too? You're I mean, talking about. If you put all natural history in a book, we're layered dust on the top of the book. You're talking about true apex predator in every sense of the word. I mean, you know, we throw that, that term apex predator around about lions and bears and things like that, but. Truly, to be an apex predator, you have to be. There's nothing else in the ecosystem that can touch you, and you truly aren't worried about anything. You know, like killer whales are true apex predators in the ocean. There is nothing short of a bull sperm whale that can mess with a killer whale. And, you know, sperm that whale, we know whale, of. Yeah, that we know of, obviously. But, as it stands right now, that 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 is a that's an apex predator. There's not too much that's going to mess with the line on the on the savannah. You know, you get thirty hyenas, they might could take a male line down if they get lucky. But there's a line's not walking around on savannah. Going, oh my god! You know, these things would be true apex predators, and I mean even more than what we would what we just talked about because there's nothing that's going to mess with these things. There's nothing that's going in this that I can see that's going to be able to take something like that down other than, you know, somebody with a, with a big high, ca uh, high caliber rifle. And even then you'd have to see it. Get a, get a, get a shot. Yeah. Cause like I said, if it, if it, if it has the capability to hide in two feet of water, like a big croc or a big gator, yeah, Doc, if you were standing two feet away from it in water, you I'd might be not get the my rifle head. around. That's I'd be over my point. head anyway. So, yeah. Doc's Doc's grounded. I'd have a snorkel. I'd probably be treading water at that point. He'd be um, standing on Robbie's shoulders going, faster, faster. That's the reason I have I stay away from water, except to shower in it. So that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. I stay away. With a harpoon gun in two feet of water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not... Not to you know, not to scare the crap and give everybody nightmare fuel, but that's what you would be looking at. I mean, if 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 you're out in the in the swamp and something like that's out there and it's hunting you, so let's let's put it in, let's put it in this perspective though. Uh, and, and if, if they are if there are numerous if there are numerous species of these reptilians, lizard man, whatever you want to call them, that are the difference thereof, or or, or there are bunches of both, or a good many of both. Um, if they're in these areas that we talk about with the cave system and such, um, if they were a true, true threat to us, I mean, I, I, I think it could be when we're looking at like the Bigfoot stuff where it are, are bears and things like that. Could they be opportunistic hunters? So it are, if they're, if they're old, if they're sick and firm, whatever, because otherwise the wild game they have in that area, you know, is probably going to be enough to sustain them. And, and, and then like Robbie had said, if, you know, crocodiles and gators eat every month or two, kind of like constrictors, you know, then the wild game in an area would be enough to sustain them, number one, and also, number two, not get depleted so they have a constant food supply. And, in, you know, much in the case of like a dog man or a Bigfoot, it, it would have to be an opportunity. It's yeah. not like these things are prowling downtown Springfield right. looking to snag people in alleys. Exactly. You've basically got to go into their territory to get, exactly. get exactly. into their crosshairs. Yeah, that's kind of what I was getting at. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, could it be a threat to us? Could we be prey? Absolutely. And, and yeah, they're, they're bigger, stronger, you know, than us and could take us down easily. But you know, I think if it you know, Much the same way a killer whale's a threat to us if you go swimming where they are. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, absolutely. and, you know, we're not, we're not technically on the menu for most of the stuff that, that attacks us. I mean, it's not like anything, any big, big animal is thinking, Oh, I want a human. 
and it's coming after us. It's an opportunistic type thing, number one. And number two, if – but if we're in that – if we're in that line of sight and it's hungry and it's time for it to eat, then oh, yeah. yeah, I think I think we're on the menu. Yeah, yeah. but I don't we're think we're not like on the menu. Said, but if we go into their home, they're grub hubbing that shit is what's happening. Right. Yeah, it's it's not like we're pursuing it. We're just we're just yeah we're we're door dashing right to them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And but when you think about it, if if that be the case, there would be how many more people that surf or swim would be attacked and eaten by sharks? I was just, I was just thinking that when you'd said something earlier about that. Yeah. Bobby. So, I mean, it's, I don't think any animal looks at, because we're for the caloric intake and the, and what, what they would get out of us. I don't think any animal would choose us over other than like what DA was talking about earlier or on a, a couple of shows ago when he's like, you know, an older grizzly bear that, you know, can't hunt, can't hunt elk or moose or deer or anything like that. They might turn to something or, you know, a, a mountain lion or something like that that's hurt or can't hunt like it's supposed to. They might turn to us as a primary mm -hmm. food source because they know they can. It don't matter if they're old and sick and hurt. They can still take us down. Mm -hmm. hey, here's, here's a question. Would eating humans cause something similar to to mad cow cause a prion disease and some of these other things i don't know depends on what we're you know carrying that we don't know about you know i was just thinking about robbie's comment about uh um you know we're, we're probably not on the menu unless it's you know, like an old grizzly or whatever like that but by the same token though think of our energy density though you know most of us are meat eaters who also eat meat eaters yeah. As far as the energy pyramid goes, that's pretty dense energy. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I the prion diseases had to come from somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. I guess it's presumable that we could carry something when it infects something like that. Um, I don't know. That's a that's a whole different kind of critter. You know, I don't think any animal wakes up and says, "Hmm, you know, I want the long pig." I don't. I, I don't. Except think, polar bears. Polar bears well, will actively hunt people. Yeah. The polar bears are kind of a, the anomaly. Polar bears are assholes. For a lot of things. <laughs> the of asshole things. of the bear world. Yeah. Seriously. But with, the, with that exception, though, I don't think, you know, I don't think great white sharks swim around looking for us. I don't think any other shark, shark species does. I don't think any, other than polar bears, I don't think any bear species walks around the woods hoping to find a human. I don't think, I honestly don't think any dog man or Bigfoot, with the exception of maybe the Gugway, <laughs> <laughs> face eater yeah i don't think any right. any animal <coughs> walks around looking for us i don't think any alligator or crocodile even the ones like gustav who was dubbed the worst man eater of the crocodile world basically i don't think that crocodile swam around looking for he the but you got to look at the situation that that crocodile was in it was like the bloodiest civil war in human history, just about. I mean, people were there were bodies getting dumped in the water by the truckloads in that area. So mm -hmm. it was it was there. I mean, but that doesn't mean that that crocodile was rolling around hunting for us. It was just an opportunistic thing. Yeah. And how oh, many other right. crocodiles, other than Gustav, took people during that time? But he was just the biggest and most recognizable at the time. So well, it's, a lot of well, you've also got a. Uh... You've also got the Indianapolis. Yeah. How many men went in the sea and how many the sharks took? Mm -hmm. But there again, well, that was opportunistic. How many times is there that many people in that injured people. of an area injured with all that stimulus going on versus right. the fires and everything? You know, I, I was thinking, you know, most of these shark attacks, they're misidentifying us as something they'd like the taste of better, like uh, seals or whatnot. You know, it's like you're at the office party and you've got a bowl of what you think are, are M&Ms. You reach in and you get a Skittle. You know, they weren't looking for us when they found us. Uh, no. It was just, oh, shit. Because like I said, if that be the case, and Jake says Crocs actively hunt, he, that's, that's kind of a misconception. What happens in places like that is people wash their clothes in that river. People clean fish in that river. 
people do stuff right there at the edge of that river where crocs hunt and they put themselves in that spe in that sp specific area where crocs hunt because that's where croc hunts is at the riverbank so i don't think crocs are actively hunting people and you know agree to disagree if, if you want to but i don't think they're actively hunting people people are just putting themselves in the spots where crocs hunt opportunistic and, yeah, and if you put yourself in a spot doing stuff like washing clothes or cleaning fish or doing all this kind of stuff right there at the river's edge where a croc hunts and a croc takes you, that's not a croc actively hunting people. That's just a person putting itself in that position or that situation, and they get taken sometimes. Yeah. That's that's just my opinion on it. I, I'm not saying that you're you're wrong and I'm right. or any. I'm just saying that's my opinion on it. I don't think that – because for something to actively hunt people, that would mean it would that that's all it does is okay. I, I'm gonna turn this wildebeest away, and I'm gonna go after this human. And I don't see a croc doing that because the caloric intake that it would get from us versus something like a wildebeest is like that's like saying I'm gonna eat this M and M instead of eating this turkey leg. What am I gonna get more sustenance over? Or bang for your buck? Yeah, exactly. I mean. Right. They prefer to have the red meat versus the white meat any day. I don't, yeah. I don't know, Robbie. Guys like you and me might be a little higher on the calorie side. Well, maybe, but you know, that's I'm certainly not, bad for their cholesterol. I'm not washing you my know, clothes. Steak has the right amount of fat on it. I'm I'm wagyu human. Yeah, I'm not washing yeah. my ri my clothes on the bank in the African River though either. <laughs> so finally marbled. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Lenora yeah, Wilson right says, there. "Do you believe sharks misidentify humans as seals or humans as mermaids?" I think a lot of times when when sharks take a bite out of somebody, it's more curiosity. They don't know what it is, so like, hey, is this edible? Well, here's the thing: sharks don't have they don't have hands. All they have is their mouth. So if they want to see what something <laughs> is, that's all, that's what they got to do. So an exploratory bite, a lot of times, is could be fatal if not. You know, at the very least, <laughs> you, you lose a hand, you lose an arm. Where the shark's like, "Ah, oh, my bad, sorry," but you know, or yeah. depending on the size of the shark, depending on the size of the shark, an exploratory bite could bite you in half. You get a a seventeen foot great white that's going to do an exploratory bite and it catches you on the midsection. You're not coming out on the good side of that. Yeah, even if the shark even even, even just a nibble could do be fatal. Yeah, even if the shark did not mean to consume you. And it does an exploratory bite, and it, it's the size of <laughs> that size. So, but the number of humans that are actually consumed by sharks versus the number of humans that are bitten and nothing, nothing ever happens. Now, those there may still be death that occurs, but a bite and no, nothing else has happened. You know, the number on this side is way higher than the number on that side. The number of people that are actually consumed by sharks is very, very minute. Compared to the number who are bitten and die versus humans aren't naturally in the ocean. It's not like we live there. So a shark eats a person. It's probably either a case of mistaken identity or it was really hungry or it just came up and attacked. Yeah. Looking for a quick meal. It's not, yeah. I don't think they're actively hunting us. No. Uh, Still Hardington says it could be there's less food out there because of overfishing. Good point. Now, I will tell you an animal that actively hunts humans is tigers. Mm -hmm. That is true. And the lions from world. Africa. Yep. But tigers in India will actively hunt humans. And that's that's why they developed that technique of wearing those masks on the back of their head. Because tigers are ambush predators and they attack from behind. So they'll wear those masks on the back of their head when they're walking down the trails. So it confuses the tiger to think that they're facing the other way. And that's kind of lowered the number of people that got attacked or get attacked. So, all right. But, here's the plan, Doc. You and I go on safari. I'm going to be wearing a plate carrier. I'm going to molly tab you to the back like that dude from the alien <laughs> film. And you're just going to keep looking blaster. behind us. And, and uh, yeah, you can keep looking behind us and, and uh, you know, providing a provide watch security. like uh, Gary Dordan. <laughs> Doc's going to be the tail gunner on a Range Rover. Yeah, I'll be rear security. Seriously. You give me a freaking minigun, I'm I'm down like four flat tires, son. Someone asked earlier. I popped the question up, but we didn't get to we didn't get to it in time. Where we were all still talking. But how do you think if lizard men are actively you know hunting in an area? How do you think lizard man would fare against a Bigfoot or a dog man? 
I think it really depends on the area that the fight happens. If it happens in well, water, where does where does the fight happen? Are they intelligent and are they actually venomous? You know, they've got that paralytic venom. They get a bite of a gugway. He's laying there staring at him while he's getting eaten. You know, uh, if it happens in the swamp and water, advantage. Lizard advantage man. lizard. Yeah. If it happens on dry land. And and that goes back to, like Steve said, are they venomous or are they not? If they're not venomous. And, and, and if they are, is whatever they're fighting immune to their venom because, like, pigs don't get bothered by rattlesnake venom. They eat yeah. the hell out of it. Yeah. yeah. So is it, is it, you know what I mean? And that's a good point, Robbie. Are they venomous, non venomous? And if they are venomous, is their prey or the, their, their opponent, is it susceptible to the effects of that venom? Exactly. And, and here's another thing is this thing pound for pound, is it as strong as like a, a constrictor? Because think about how strong constrictors are. Oh, yeah. A six foot constrictor. Pound for pound can be as strong, and if not stronger, than a gorilla. Yeah, per square inch. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. oh. if these things have that type of strength, then they're they're probably stronger than a Bigfoot. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying that's that's just something to throw out there. I mean, reptiles are deceptively strong. I mean, think about how much crushing force a gator and a croc have. I mean, in their jaws. They're, I mean, like the constrictors, the snakes, the pythons, and anacondas and whatnot. I mean, they're solid freaking ropes of muscle. Yep. You know, I mean, you're you're talking about two to three thousand pounds per square inch of constriction power. Boys, we're at the oh. bottom of the hour. Uh, Steve, how about you tell us a little bit about Brock Blades? It's usually me, so I'll let you tonight. righty. Well, uh, yeah, you know, put up the the little thing. Uh, so we were talking about uh, uh, Scallywag Tactical earlier, and you know Scallywag blades are are awesome. You know they're they're in my opinion the the best uh, mass produced blades you can get on the market. You know value for the buck, but they are mass produced. So you 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 know the bounty the DA owns is going to look just like the bounty that that Robbie owns. Uh, you know my mini jack is going to look like Doc's mini jack, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, with Brock blades, uh, you're dealing with custom made handmade blades you know uh ken brock makes them himself uh and so no two are going to be exactly alike these are these are not only you know tools and weapons but they're they're works of art and uh so uh you know they're just a just a different kind of critter uh and uh of course you know we've been been uh, shooting the craft with uh, with ken tonight he's definitely a, a friend of the channel he's part of us like everybody else is um, and uh, he uh, supports us. If, if you use the code or cryptid10 in your order, you get 10% off. Uh, and um, uh, you know, they're just good stuff. Uh, you know, uh, Doc's got his uh, what is it, your neck weasel? Is that what it is? The, street uh, weasel. the street weasel, thank you. Street Sorry, my, my mistake, you know, and, uh, and, also and known as the uh, and my the Doc Cleveland. What is that? Act? I call that the pimp yep. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, DA's got the uh, skin do, if I remember correctly. It's you know, kind of a kind of a backup uh, weapon for uh, you know Highlanders. Uh, you know, these are these are really neat products, really unique products, made of some of the best stuff. And uh, you know, and he he does within reason some custom stuff. You know, you, you tell him what you're looking for, he'll set you up. And uh, really awesome stuff, you know. Like I said, you're getting a tool and a work of art all at once. You know, it's one of those heirloom items that you'll hand down to your kids, your grandkids down the line. That's all I have for you. Thank you, sir. Let me uh, swap that. And back. in a short period of time, he'll get it to you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Ken. That's a Anyways. little humor there, Steve. Huh? So that was a little humor was there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a little cruel, depending on how you look at it, I guess. But you know, I still haven't gotten even for the Kim Jong Un haircut comment that he made a while back. 
<laughs> what do you think I wear this uh, El Chapo hat? You yeah. rather look like a drug dealer than seriously. <laughs> you know, I protected Mercy myself from Ken, Ken Black insults and selling cocaine. <laughs> cocaine. Cocaine. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> Well, if it was a, if it was a really, to be really, on the show. If it was a really, really <laughs> ugly hat, I'd have to say what my daddy used to say. He, he'd see me or my brothers wearing a hat, and he goes, man, I want two of them hats. I was like, why? He says, so I can crap one and cover it up with the other one. Seriously. Well, the problem is, you know, sometimes it's it's not good to draw attention to something that's disproportionately out of, out of size. I've got a melon head. So let's put a big ass white hat with a colorful band on it and draw attention to the damn thing. Not a good idea. <laughs> we just broke out. <laughs> He's out there looking like one of them, them, uh, them little uh, pop funk little <laughs> things. Yeah. Oh, he's got Steve's a huge not- kind of genshin and cranium. He's holding a bat. It's like an orange and a toothpack. I'll just Jesus sit on the show the whole time going, Steve. head. Head, dude. Head, king, me. Oh, your neck should be 24 inches across, man. That's a huge melon you're hauling on your shoulders. Jesus. Joseph and the brain. How are you holding your head up, you bastard? Corey Barnes says a yeah. Steve bobblehead. <laughs> 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 we should all get... You know, what, once all get you're taking it in the second floor, we're pretty the much there, Larry. <laughs> Yeah, we should all get custom Popo funks made of us or bobbleheads. You can do that on your website. the The choices are pretty limited, but you know you can you can custom make one of yourself. Freaking hilarious! Oh, all our dark frontier. They had more characters. selections though. Just like our yeah. dark frontier characters. There you go. That would be that would be, that would be funny. Most excellent. Oh you lord! Turn that was dead cool. towards each other, make them just bobble each other like they're having an argument with each other. <laughs> Yeah, my my wife, the Angie, the consummate horror movie fan, has got a, a Friday the Thirteenth Jason bobblehead that's solar powered, and the little head does like this back and forth with a freaking mask on. That's She's amazing. Up the window in the kitchen. So, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally. That's awesome. <laughs> Boys, you guys kill me. <laughs> I do like the bobblehead, though. That's just funny as hell. I picture the four of us lined up on like a windowsill, all just going. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. What is this? DAX Mac on the podcast. <laughs> Put them all on the dash of your car whenever we go out uh, go out to explore someplace. <laughs> Should we be here? <laughs> do we care? Well, no. Do we, do, we, do we intro the show? We're all just lined up, you know, bobbling with a with Noah's voiceover. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh, We're my. so wrong. I hurt. <laughs> I hurt. You know, it was only a moment before we were gonna, you know, at least slightly go off the rail. We didn't do too bad. We're back on. <laughs> we stayed fairly focused for most of the most of the night. Yeah, we've done good. Hour forty three. Yeah, I think we did pretty doggone good. Whew. <laughs> That's just funny. <laughs> and me and Doc even had movie comments, and we didn't get off rails with it. I know. I know. It's amazing how many people have not seen that movie. I date my I date myself constantly when I'm teaching classes and there's people from the younger generation and I'm start talking about Tombstone or I start making my older movie references and you know, like Bueller, Bueller, anyone and people are like mm-hmm. the young people are like, What is that? I'm like, Here's your homework, here's your movie assignment list. Seriously. Like, if you I read that work all the time. Friends. Yeah. You know, you know, Doc, you could probably vouch for this, you know. When you and I went into nursing, you typically, the young nurses started on night shift. And then as you got seniority, you got to go to the day shift. And so all, all the day shifters tend to be older. Well, thanks to, you know, the 21st century plague and whatever else, new nurses are getting to start right on day shift. And the night shifters are the ones that figure out they don't like to deal with management. They'll make more money working overnight. So 
I was doing some math the other day and the average age of our day shift nurses is like 22 years old. The average age of the night shifters is 41. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it's <coughs> funny when, when we're doing shift change, I'll make some kind of an offhanded joke that my, my night shifters think is hysterical. The day shift will kind of give me this. I'm like, it's going to take too long to explain it to you, kid. Just, just go home. Exactly. Yeah. I uh, I showed off something today on the um, the Patreon. So all <laughs> the Patreon folks have had a chance to take a look at this. How would you guys like a sneak peek at something? Now, granted, this is just this is the concept. It's not the final, but it's pretty close to final. We're we're gonna make a couple of changes before we go to print with it. But how would you guys like to see something cool? Hi. Okay. All right, tell me what y'all think of this. Ooh, math party. I like it. I'm assuming that's for the short stories. Yep. There should yeah. be a bunch of details. The more you look at it, the more details jump out on you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that fog is scary as shit, given the, con the uh, conversations we've had this evening. I like it. That's really cool. I like Looks it a good. lot. I like the moon. And of yeah. course, there's a skull right here by the oh, water's man. edge. I didn't notice there was a skull in the moon either. I didn't either until you just zoomed in on it. That's really, that's pretty rad, man. I like that. It looks really, really I mean, nice, Clark. From the standpoint of being scary, the more you look at it, the worse it gets. Yeah, my, uh, my, my cover artist did a real good job on that. So that's the new short story collection that will hopefully be out sometime later this week. Sweet. Um, it's nice. Thank you, boys. <laughs> uh, uh, Arkansas, Paul Gunner said, speaking of TV, do y'all remember those werewolf series from the 70s? Chuck Connors played an extra. That was actually was actually called Werewolf, and it was in the 80s. And it was in the eighties. Yeah, yeah, it was a good movie. He played uh, Chuck Connors played Yano Scorzini. Or eighty seven. Yes, and the, they had the blood appeared on his hand in the shape of a pentagram before he'd start to change. Yep. John J. York as Eric Cord. That was a good movie. I good remember series. that. I when you mentioned the pentagram, I remembered it. I've got the entire series on uh, DVD. That was one of my favorite. I need to see if I can find those on awesome. DVD. Those were good. I've got those werewolf movies are some of my favorites, but that that show was so revolutionary. In the things that like, there was never a transform a full transformation on camera, and I maybe it wasn't full, but there was never a transformation of on camera like that on TV before that show. The issues and things that they dealt with, and I, it was just that thing was just. That show was amazing. Now, uh, there was another question on another show or movie earlier. I can't remember who had it. Said, "Have any of y'all watched the movie The Cave?" Yes. Oh yeah, that was a great movie. It had Cole Hauser in it. Yeah. Rip. Okay, it enlightened me uh, as the uninitiated. I I don't recall that one. You need to watch it. A group yeah. of cavers okay. go to explore a cave somewhere in Romania, and it's the origin of the vampire stories. What's in this cave? And it's terrifying. Oh, shit. And KC, okay. yes, I have an encyclopedia of useless information. I've amassed a ton of useless information over my 49, almost 50 years. And only some of it was useful. He could really do something with himself. I know. I, you know. But, <laughs> hey. What you got there, Doc? Oh, that's that dagger that me and Kim. Dagger. What, uh, what was the name of what, Lord? <laughs> I helped glue the handles down. That's about the extent of my of, of my expertise in this knife. Lori, if you're asking the name Apparently of the, the show that we're talking we were talking about earlier, it's, it is Werewolf. That was that that was the Apparently name. Apparently, the cave is streaming on Netflix. Yes, it is. Good movie. Sounds like but, it's uh, I have planned for tomorrow. Werewolf was on in on in like '87 on Fox. 
or what was what is Fox now? But oh, I remember that man because we yeah. that's when we had a Fox TV show, a TV and station on the in here, Gulfport. And here, here's yeah. some trivia for you. Here's some trivia for you. My favorite episode is Blood on the Tracks, and Everett McGill played uh, a boxer, a down his luck boxer who was out hunting, running from the mafia because he did, he didn't duck a fight like he was supposed to with money. Everett McGill played a werewolf in the movie Stephen King, or Stephen King's movie Silver Bullet, so that was pretty cool that he played. Ooh, that. He was the preacher. He was a preacher in Silver mm -hmm. Bullet. Yes, and he played. He played. It, it, it's it just a little tie in trivia that he played somebody that gets helped by the werewolf, but he played the werewolf on the big screen, and yeah, just just more of that useless knowledge that means absolutely nothing. But there it is. Well, that kind of stuff's cool, though. Like, you know, when they did the uh, the Brandon Routh uh, Superman movie, it was a Superman Returns or whatever it was. You know, they had the dude that played Jimmy Olsen playing that bartender. You know, they had the chick that well, played Lois Lane playing that that now, little crazy lady that yep. the dogs ate. You know, Brandon Routh played Superman Superman Returns, which that was supposed to be the same Superman as Christopher Reeve, because they, they call that the Reeve Routh Superman. Oh, then and he, he played close to him too. Y'all done opened up a whole can of it now. Robbie's Robbie's on his movie trivia, son. He acts and he played uh what was it, Adam the Adam in uh the Arrowverse. Mm -hmm. And then he actually played the Reed Ralph Superman when they did the, the crossover of yeah, Infinite. He played Earth. the Krypton Sun Superman. He, he played yeah. that and that was the Reed Ralph Superman. And he actually, so he actually, because there was a scene in there where he said, hey, he looks like my, or she looks like my cousin. So they've tied all the, all the infinite earths together from awesome. the comic book slash the cinema on the Arrowverse. So hey, they had me when they had the 1990s Flash interact with the new one. Yeah, because you know, um, Barry Gibb played the 1990s Flash, but he was actually, uh, he was actually, dad of the flash in the new uh cw flash yeah i know doc yeah. i can't help it yeah you met that guy didn't you dear did you see what ken wrote uh, he said not because he works out about sharks or movies <laughs> <laughs> i don't pay attention to that little fella hey i met the guy that played the original flash um Barry Drawing Gibb. a complete blank. John Wesley Ship, John, right? John Wesley, John Wesley Ship. Ship. Yeah, I met him. Yeah. Super nice guy. Uh, he, he, he'll be my flash. You know, I'm just saying. Oh, that's, that's awesome. funny. <sighs> that's good. That's too funny. You can't. You just can't make some people happy. I mean, that's just that, you. You can't. And, and and he he's 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 just looking he's just looking for that round that chink in that armor. Well, <laughs> you know, there's something really special about this podcast. In all seriousness, with the interaction with everybody, you know, I I had a funny 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 time when uh, Robbie came to to Springfield, and you know, uh, Robbie and Da and myself and our spouses were all sitting there together with with uh, Noah, and we just you know somehow managing to, to disappear an entire case of yingling and other things. And I just, think it walked just away. Our butts I off. blame Noah. Like, I, I, well, I was thinking the dog because I mean, yeah, you it's know, Harley. Harley drank them all. The Harley got kind of chill there. Uh, yeah. I don't know. My dog likes beer, uh, but you know, we were just sitting there. It's like we'd known each other for decades, just shooting the shit there at the table. It's the first time we met face to face. You get on the show here and you know, there's us along with it, you know, 185 of our closest friends and it's the same stuff. It's the same ball bust and it's the same joke and it's the same stories, you know, like DA always says, it, you know, your your family. We and, put the fun and uh, dysfunctional. Seriously. Yeah. Well, yeah, when Doc came down here for the for the class, me and him and Kim went out to the restaurant and you know, it was just like it was like, you know, we'd done it a thousand times before. Yeah, it it, it really was. Well, it was like when DA and I mean DA and I had known each other for well over a decade, 11 years, you know, and when me and him first met face to face, it was just, just 
like off and running. Just off and running, man. Right where you left off. Yeah. Well, you know, and and I've had people around here that have watched the show and come back and said, "So how long have you known those guys?" I'm like, right. And they're like, "What? There's no way." Yeah, y'all act like I've known each other your entire lives. I figured y'all went to school together or something like that. Like, no, no, we just did everything. Well, and it's like when I met same breed of idiot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like when I met Ken for the first time, you know, at the class in South Carolina, it, it was just, just, dude, just we all hit it off, you know, like when Robbie ran out to his shop there and everything. So, yeah, it's just, it's easy. It's easy when you got the, well, the, the same kindred spirits, you know? Exactly. Well, there was one night where, where Ken subbed in on the show for us. And it was funny as hell because he comes on and, he, and he's like, yeah, I had to go to the liquor store because I was going to be on the show tonight. I'm like, yeah, he's pretty much figured it out. But, I mean, he just jumped right in like he had been part of it forever. You know, nothing. Exactly. There was no warm need to get him back no, on. You know, there was no, um, well, this is how we do things. And, you know, this is DA. And, and, you know, it's just like all of a sudden, I think he logged in like 10 minutes before the show, poured himself a and drink. And like, again, off and running. Off and running. And it was it was wonderful. It was, you know, it was great. And, you know, our guests feel that way, though, too. I mean, remember that, that first time Jonathan was, uh, Mayberry was on? He's like, I feel like I've made friends here, you know? That was Absolutely. huge. I had a little nerd squeal over that, you know? <laughs> Lori Barnes says you guys make us want to drink. <laughs> <laughs> we make each other want to drink. <laughs> I'm sober every other day of the week. May not be able to drive a semi, but I drove my wife to drinking. <laughs> Speaking of that, I'll be right back. I gotta go get something. <laughs> well, probably was it, fresh uh, out. I'm not yet begun to define myself. Yep, you're right. I want to show this to you, Doc. My sister got me two of these oh. little metal cubes. Yeah. They're coated in stainless steel, but whatever the hell they're made out of has a super high specific heat. It one of them made this ridiculous glass of Irish whiskey like too cold to touch. That's pretty rad. And they probably made out of depleted uranium or some shit. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty Getting rad. cancer, but what the heck, it's cold. Seriously. Yeah, that's pretty cool. My teeth yeah. are falling out, but I feel great. <laughs> Man, when your hair cool. falls out, you'll be as bald as the rest of us. Well, except Doc. What do you think I'm wearing the hat? Eve. You'll be like the rest of us. Jeez, fellas. I'll be cool just like my face. And we have officially reached the portion of the show where we go off the rails. We are done. <laughs> Ken, I don't even know what... Uh, We've reached our capacity for focus tonight. Whatever the heck you just wrote is. Another daiquiri. <laughs> now, what's he talking about, Doc? What is that? A little fuzzy drink with an umbrella. Yeah, it's it's a fruity drink with rum in it. I don't know, man. I had a, I had this thing at the Gene Lafitte's Absinthe House down in Nolens. It's called the Voodoo Daiquiri. I just call it Purple Drink because it is bourbon, Everclear, and Great Kool Aid Daiquiri. Mm. Son, See, I almost that sounds like a recipe for lost Orleans. time. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were all we were out. Me and Angie and our our our, our good friend uh, Lynn Jordan, we were all out down there, and we were out till six forty seven in the morning. Look, <laughs> it, 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 good you, night. Ken trying to say that I'm drinking a daiquiri. This is the same guy that uh, when I went to the Biltmore House, went to their winery. You know, everybody in our group, they're like, oh, "What? What do you want?" And they're like, "I want this. What do you want? I want this. What do you want?" Just to me, now, now keep in mind, I'm sitting there wearing my Dale Jr. hat and my Dale Sr. shirt. And I said, just start at the top and work your way down. Raise hell, praise Dale. Come on. I uh, said, start at the top and work your way down. Because I don't know what the hell any of this stuff is. Just, just <laughs> start at the top and work your way down and we'll figure <laughs> it out from there. Well, as a bourbon drinker, Doc, you might appreciate this. I went bowling with my daughter and her boyfriend for her birthday. And you know, my daughter's old enough to drink now, and I, I'm proud of her. She could hold her own as well as I can. Uh, but the bowling alley we were at had an amazing thing called a whiskey smash. 
And I'd look at the menu and it's like made with Maker's Mark bourbon. And I'm like, you got me sold right there. Apparently it's Maker's Mark, basically sweet and sour mix and a little bit of Angostura orange bitters. Dangerously smooth, my friend. It'll mess you up like Percocet. And AD, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not cultured enough to drink with uh, umbrellas and pineapple slices and shit like that. Yeah. If it gets beyond an old fashioned, it's a little too complicated for me. Yeah. yeah. It's not too bad until you choke on the uh, umbrella and then you're like, yep, yeah, shouldn't have done that. Open it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-mm. Yeah, mercy. You no, know, I, I finally realized my age when I made the mistake of going drinking with a group of uh, coworkers, and uh, you know, we we go to a, a big chain restaurant that has a bar. We're all ordering our drinks, and you know they're all ordering things with fruit in them and names that I hadn't recognized. They get to me, I'm like Scotch, neat, and all my coworkers just kind of go, "Yeah, I'm like leave me alone." I'm pretty simple, beer and whiskey. That's about it. I ain't judging, brother. That's where I'm at. I mean, I, I'm not even sophisticated enough to get some of the bourbons and scotches and things like that. The DA and Doc and Steve do. I mean, I, peanut butter whiskey, uh, oh fireball whiskey. Uh, what's this other one in here? What's uh, that peanut butter and jelly drink you make? Oh, it is. That caught my attention when he said that. No whiskey oh, labels oh, on the air, man. You'll get us oh, demonetized. Sorry, sorry, I couldn't read it. Uh, smoky Tennessee butter, uh, peanut butter whiskey and a great NOS. Damn it, Robbie, take that tourniquet off your neck. You're scaring Lady Bird. Sorry, I didn't realize I was uh, on uh, camera. We're still on camera, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can drink, great, we just can't show the labels. I know, that's what I think is funny. We're like, we're, we're, you know, drinking through a cozy. The only thing I'm advertising is my favorite local band. In your window. <laughs> Anybody who drinks it knows what's in here. Oh. Uh, well, we are after the two-hour mark, and we have definitely you know, lost the yeah. topic along the way. Uh, folks, tomorrow oh, is Easter. Is, uh, so happy Easter, everybody. Hope you all have a, uh, a safe and amazing holiday f- uh, filled with, you know, family and friends and, and good food. And uh, hope you all are, are, are all safe and, and enjoy the holiday. Um, we're we're kind of winding down at the, at the end of the night. Um, one thing I want to mention is the 22 a day foundation. It's something that's very near and dear to my heart. It's something I'm always going to mention. Uh, we lose 22 veterans a day to suicide. And that is 22 too many. Um, we all have our dark moments, you know, well, all of us here have worn a uniform at one time or another in our life, uh, to, you know, different, d- differing degrees and types, but we've all been there and we've all, you know, wrote that blank check and put our ass on the line and, uh, something I'm very proud of and proud of these guys for doing it. Uh, but you know, we, we all also have faced our demons and we've all, we've all had those moments and I've, I've had a, a few dark days of, of late. Um, you know, y'all know I've had some pretty serious health scares and, uh, there's even more going on now that I haven't really, really discussed publicly. Um, but I did get a fairly good prognosis from the heart doctor the other day. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Uh, they are talking about putting in a, a cracking me open and putting in a defibrillator. So, yay. Um, <laughs> so that, that's probably going to happen. In the next month your car. It's great. I told him, I said, I'm going to get it. And they asked me how I'm doing. I'm going to be like, oh, I'm fine, 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 fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Does it come with you a know, bother it's me at all? The remote I took care of a patient where they put it in upside down. And they bring him up to the floor, and I'm going to take care of him for about 12 hours until he goes home. And the whole time he's sitting there, when his heart rate got a rhythm, he'd go. Because they literally put it in upside down. God, I hope they don't do that to me. Oh, they won't, brother. They better that guy not. no longer works with the system, if you know what I mean. Gotcha. But anyway, what I was saying is we lose we lose 22 veterans a day to suicide, and that is entirely too many. 22 too many, in fact. Uh, so, you know, folks, especially on a holiday weekend, reach out to those, you know, you know, that, put, that wore a uniform, whether they were a veteran or a first responder in any capacity. 
you know, they, they've, they've seen and had to deal with some crap in their lives. And, um, you never know when buying somebody a cup of coffee or just sending them that 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Hey, fucker, you awake text, uh, might be what pulls somebody back from the edge that day. And, uh, you know, when, when you've got a big fight, when you're fighting those demons, little victories count. And, um, uh, let's all just keep aiming for them little victories. Uh, and, and reach out to those that we care about and let them know we're thinking about them and let them know you love them and let them know they're not fighting alone. Even if they don't want to talk about it, sometimes all you got to do is just be there. Uh, sometimes sitting in silence with somebody is more powerful than you could ever imagine. Um, I know it's meant the world to me a number of times. Didn't really want to talk, but just having somebody there meant the world. Uh, so reach out to those you know the first responders, the, 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 the former soldiers, the, the veterans, the active duty, and uh, let them know, let them know you're thinking of them. Let them know that they're not alone. And uh, I, I want to thank you all for doing that. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm a big proud supporter of the Till Valhalla project. Unlike a lot of big charities, Till Valhalla, like 95% of what, I, what they take in goes into getting, you know, artificial limbs, getting therapy, uh, buying service dogs. They they do a, a lot of amazing work. A lot of these bigger charities, they spend more money on advertising and salaries than they actually do on the veterans, and that really hurts me. Uh, but, you know, Till Valhalla Project is one of the good ones. Uh, so check them out. I know I've got their their link. Let me put that up. Normally Noah beats me to it, but I'll, uh, I'll put the Till Valhalla one up there. Here we go. Let me move that up so it's not over their face. But check out the Till Valhalla Project because, like I said, all that goes to veterans' charities and they do a lot of a lot of good work. Uh, so you know, if you're looking for a really cool, some really cool T-shirts, in fact, that's where I got this one, the Embrace the Suck T-shirt. Uh, they've got some awesome T-shirts and mugs and all kinds of stuff. Uh, but check them out because, like I said, it goes it goes right back into helping veterans, and that's that's something that we all need to be more conscious of because, you know. Yeah, as the saying goes, all gave some, but some gave all. And uh, some are still fighting that war even back here at home. So, again, let them know you care about reach them. Out. Yeah, reach exactly. out. Because, you know, um, there's a great Robin Williams quote that I will probably completely butcher. But, you know, basically says that the, the happiest people are the ones that are hurt the most. And they are so cordial because they don't want anybody to feel like they've felt. Uh, you'd be surprised he's hurting. And there were a couple of times where, where some of the gentlemen sitting here and some that are no longer with us have reached out to me at that odd hour. And, you know, I got the, the right fucker text. And that all right fucker text was all it took to chase the shadows away. The shadows were starting to win. And, uh, you know, God bless you for doing it. You know, and, uh, you know, we all struggle. We struggle. And, uh, and our veterans and our, our first responders and whatnot. I mean, I, I haven't seen anything compared to what the veterans have seen. I, I won't pretend to. I'm just a nurse. But, uh, you know, be there for each other. You know, we're a family. Let's keep it that way. Absolutely. And, folks, we'll close out the show with a toast. We've been doing this for a while, and it's something I want to continue to do. We might swap out the toast from from uh, from time to time, but uh, I really like this quote, and I'm going to stick with it for a bit. Uh, but eventually we will we will rotate some more some other toasts through, but the sentiment remains the same. Uh, this this uh, is a quote from a song called "The Parting Glass," and it's played in Irish pubs all over the world at the end of the night when people lift in a glass before they head home for the night. But if you listen to the lyrics, if you if you understand what they're saying, it's more than just saying good night to somebody at the end of the end of the night, the close of the pub. It's lifting a glass to those we've lost along the way, to those who can't be, who aren't there anymore to lift that glass with us. So we'll close out the show with this quote from the parting glass. If you all would raise a glass with me, I don't care if you're drinking sweet tea, whatever you're drinking, just have a, have a glass and join me in the toast. And it says, but since it fell into my lot that I should rise and you should not, I'll gently rise and softly call. Good night and joy be to you all. Good night, everybody. Happy Easter, and thank you for being with us. Thank you for joining us. Catch us again Wednesdays and Saturdays on DAX Machina. A special thanks to all our channel members and Patreon supporters. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe.